All right. Uh, Destiny isn't here, and Deanna is on my couch feeling sick, so I don't think we're going to be getting a and d this week. Well, could she... You want to do it? You want to do it? Could she at least vomit okay. for no, us? No, Des- no, Deanna is up. She is walking over here. She is wearing a mask, but she is ready to go. She's a champ. I'm going to I'm going to go on break. This Okay, you go on a All break. Right. I will give you an intro and then I'm going to change the baby and then I'm going to come back. Okay. So, um Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of D&D, Deanna and Destiny's podcast that sometimes has destiny and has nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons. I am here with Deanna, and uh, of course I am me, Reverend Steve. You may have heard my podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So without any further ado, let me uh, send it on over to Deanna. Here you go, Deanna. What's up, motherfuckers? Uh, guess what we're going to talk about today? Uh, I'm going to lower my my mask my breathing mask right now because i'm terribly sick and my mother made me wear it but uh i'd like to start off this segment by saying i think it's about time you guys get to know me a little better because anyone who knows me long enough do you have tissues somewhere cool yeah right in front anyone who knows me long enough Finds out that I have a favorite series of movies. And (laughs) um, they're not exactly the best movies. The first one is arguably a classic monster movie uh, by many different definitions, but the others, the others are not. Clearly not. Um, And of course, I'm speaking of Kevin Bacon's Tremors. Uh, which he did not direct, but he's in. So it's Kevin Bacon's, I guess. Even though yeah, you kind of like how that one Godzilla is Matthew Broderick's Godzilla. Yeah. Even though it's like definitely Michael Gross's, because he's in all of them. <laughs> oh God, sorry. I was having nostril leakage. So, um, anyways, I love Tremors. I collect all of them. I have the complete 13-episode uh, TV series. I haven't watched it all yet because it's god-awful. Is that the one with Kevin Bacon in it? No. No? Okay. Yeah, that's Mom. I'm talking. You're being very rude. Yeah, welcome to my world. Um, no, the one with Kevin Bacon in it is a new one that they're coming out with. Okay. I think. I thought it was already canceled, so I'm, I'm, I'm all confused. It might have been. I don't know. No, the other one has this suave guy, whatever. I don't care. Um, Michael Gross is in them, but it's really out of what? character because there's this one dude in it that's supposed to be, like, the cool collected fucking guy. Yeah, there's always one of those. Yeah. And he's uh somehow better than, you know, Bert. It's bullshit, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys know this, but Tremors came out with a sixth movie recently. I can't believe there's been six Tremors in the TV show. That's amazing to me. Uh, they actually came out a year or two back with a fifth movie, out of, out of the blue, as well as a sixth movie. Because I have not heard a thing about this movie until it was out. And I saw it on Netflix. Um, I don't know how much you know about Tremors. But I'm going to go into this as if you already have the exact knowledge that I do of Tremors. That's fine. And if you don't, well then... You're just a hater. I will gladly have a elongated special one of these days talking about the Tremors series in which I go over all the fantastical details and my thoughts on this horrible horrible monster series okay so um 
This six Tremors movie is called A Cold Day in Hell. Alternatively, I like to refer to it as the Alaskan Bullworm movie because they are in Alaska now. Uh, now this 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 movie this movie starts off with a couple of researchers doing work. Is that fucking Dwayne? Yeah. Jesus. The other one is me. I know. You look very clean. <laughs> I'm the shaven. Mexican one. <laughs> is that Bella? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a book in the back there. It says the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, that was, at, that was at you guys' Christian school. Huh. In Sacramento. Anyways. Uh, sorry, I'm really, like, loopy right now. I'm going through these uh, alternate phases while I'm sitting here sick where I'm either hyper-focused on everything that's going around me or I have no idea if this is real and my arm's moving and I know I can't feel that moving and I don't know why it is. Yeah. So that's what's happening right now. So if I if I if I get on, off track, sorry. But uh, a cold day in hell starts off with these searchers in Alaska that get attacked by graboids. And you already know there's gonna be uh, just a just a whoo, just a real winner as this last one was. Because the last one was uh, Tremors 5, Bloodlines, the more recent one, aside from this one, where they switch from using puppets to CGI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, CGI sucks, by the way. I think we could all have assumed that without you having to say it, but that's fine. <laughs> Uh, but it uses the same exact model of the Graboid as it does from the fifth movie. Because in the fifth movie, they go to Australia because there's an Australian breed of them that is different, that their, um, their mouth grabbers can detach and snake away and get shit, and they jump out of the ground and spin. And also it took out the entire Shrieker, part of the line and just went straight from Graboid to Ass Blaster which by the way I hate the new design for the Ass Blaster because you used to have like a, a neck and a face and now it's just a body and then like a hole of serrated, serrated teeth. I'd like to think the Australian ones eat humans on the Barbie. Mm. That was an Australian joke. I got it. Nice. Nice. Anyways, it sucks. And this this movie continues that tradition of not even mentioning Shriekers again and having the ass blasters look like shit. Shit fuck. <laughs> uh, but, and the Graboids do jump out of the ground, however their mouth pieces are attached to them. So there's that difference. One. Nothing. Um... This movie starts off with the attack, and then it cuts to Bert, who is now living in Chang's general store in the first movie. And it, it's uh, it's confusing for a long-time watcher, such as I, because Bert has always had a history of having this very fortified house in Perfection, Nevada. And to keep out tremor or to keep out graboids and all of their changes, you know. Uh, but now he's suddenly living in Chang's, which in the first movie was infiltrated by graboids. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's not really a market anymore. He still sells things sometimes, but really it's just his quote unquote base and uh, attacks collector comes to the, the store to tell him that they repossessed the land that he's on and he's fighting again I don't know how this all happened nobody's fucking there Bert is the last person in Perfection Valley which is strange to me uh, um, 
and he gets mad. There, throughout the movie, there's a weird, uh, there's a weird focus on the fact that Bert has changed his hat, because within all of the movies, he had a titular Atlanta Seahawks hat that he wore all of them. Now he has a Cubs hat, and people ask him if he changed teams. And instead, he says, no, just hats. And it comes up, like, three different times. So, he's pissed off at this tax man. And then, um, from the fifth movie comes this younger person that is now his, uh, his side, his, his sidekick, who also turns out to be his illegitimate son. And this guy, uh, kind of looks like, the actor that plays him kind of looks like uh, whoever played Jamie off of Scrubs, but like not quite. Anyways, he rides a motorcycle and he he's he's a, he's, a, he's a hooligan. He's he's nothing other than a true hooligan by definition. I think. We're the hooligans. <laughs> Wears a leather jacket. He rides a motorcycle. He's very against a lot of Bert's ways, and yet he still wants to have a relationship with his father. Um, and then he get, they, get, they get a call. They get a call from the research group that's in Alaska to come up there and see if they can eradicate the graboid problem. Because that's who you call if you have graboids. I don't know if you know this, but you call Bird Gummer. Oh, yes. Uh, graboid enthusiast. <laughs> um... And he said, he's like, there, there's no graboids in Alaska. They go through dirt, not ice. And and I don't know why he's even doubting at this point. Yeah. Considering how much he's seen, but whatever. Anyway, um, one one of the one of the researchers on the team turns out to be Val and Rhonda's daughter from the first movie, which is Kevin Bacon's uh, character. And the seismologist. Nice. And her name is also Val. Her name is Valerie McKee. And what are the odds, you know? Um, <laughs> so they convince Bert to go up there. Uh, Bert takes a moment to think it over and he goes up to his hammock on top of Chang's market and he appears to fall asleep and have some sort of. Um, bad hallucinations. I I wrote here. I wrote here. Um, specifically, Bert appears to be suffering from bad hallucinations and symptoms akin to paranoia in his dreams, mm -hmm. and uh, that's later changed. But right now, that's where we we have to go on. They decide to go to Alaska. They get into this plane with this minor character whose name I don't even remember, but uh, helps them for a little bit. She's some not very good actress that's like an old pilot lady. Yeah. And she, her whole character was that she was taking them to Alaska while also uh, shipping moonshine over the border. Um, anyways, it, it's introduced, they get, uh, called, they get brought down by an ass blaster, and then are met with Canadian authorities, which are in Alaska for, for something. I can't remember what, but they don't say it first. Um, so Canada's there. Canada, Canada's, um, military. Yeah. And stuff. And Bert is, of course, immediately suspicious. I'm There's just, I'm just so glad to see that the father from Family Ties is still working. That's, that's it. Where? There's a bug right there. Kill it. Okay. Uh. So, anyways, they eventually make it there to the research facility, and Val, the 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 child Val, and Bert's first real interaction is that he notices she's wearing graboid skin boots and she says that Kevin Bacon's character 
Valentine made them for her, which I'm calling bullshit first off. Yes, you are. Because, um... No, I meant sister. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. Hi, Dad. Second Dad. If they're allowed to be loud, I can be loud too. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Hi, buddy. Hi. Um. Fuck you. Thank you. Aw, oh, what? <sighs> Everyone's coming through the door. Please excuse the noise. Okay. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Love him in my room. <sighs> Uh, anyway, I'm calling bullshit on Valerie uh, Valentine making his child grab white skin boots because everything we've seen of Val's character in the first movie is that he's in it for the money, and he wouldn't have kept anything of a graboid. Yeah. To make an to make boots, let alone be able to make boots. They were handymen back then, but even then they weren't that good. No, they weren't very good at all. That's what made them so fun. Yeah. So where did Kevin Bacon learn how to make boots from a skin that has never been worked with before? A skin that was, in each movie, promoted to be very, very tough to breach. See... See, for me, I absolutely loved the first one. The first one was such a throwback to good old-fashioned 50s monster movies. You know? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's the, only, it's the only one in the series that is actually a good monster movie. Yeah, and um, that's, that's what's kept me away from the rest of them. It's like, you know what? I don't think this is ever going to be this good. This this is it. They hit it. They hit it right. You know. Yeah. And you're exactly right. I watched the others from Curiosity, and I love them because uh, I'm just that bitch. Well, but, that's that's exactly how I read all of the Dune books. Because I read the first Dune book, the original Dune book, and I absolutely fell in love with that book. It was so it was so great with its plots and plans and all of that. So I read the rest of the books in the series and every one of them sucked. Nice. Uh also put some clothes on her. Um I'm gonna go pick Matt up, so does uh you Steve Uh any um sorry. Uh Val. What was next? Next Val, shoes, got it, okay. So, anyways, uh, I wrote in the part here about the hat, I already went over that. Uh, they mentioned some kind of chemical, which I still haven't been able to look up to see if it's actually real or not, so I'm just gonna go over that, because it cuts to a re the Canadian research group again, who is researching spring water in Alaska, and their, uh, their detection system in the spring water finds a strange, uh, formic acid in the form of a gas yeah. in the water and then there's also graboid eggs which one of the researchers steps on and incites uh, rage from a graboid because as you know graboids are very paternal creatures I did not as, know that as stated in none of the movies <laughs> Then how'd you figure that out if it wasn't stated? That's the fucking point, Destiny. <laughs> Destiny's back. She's not going to be talking with us, though, because she I don't know hates anything. Me. I don't know anything about fucking tremors. She dragged me here, and I'm sick off my ass, and now I'm here alone talking to you, Bunny, about tremors. <laughs> Enjoy it. So oh, doesn't you? your life suck having to talk to me? <laughs> oh. No, you, she fucking no. hates you. No, you're the best part of this situation. I found oh, my, my, good. my cup from Arbison. The, the worst part is that I can't breathe out of one nostril. Hold on. I'm not gonna rush. So, why did you. Uh, there there is actually a good, a good shot of Bert's bloodshot yeah. eye. Yeah. Later. Uh, which is actually kind of cinematic and threw me for a loop, which is why I even wrote it down. <laughs> and this comes when uh, they're being attacked by the Graboid again. Talk to me about, like. Uh. 
and he collapses on the ground with these visions again, and it's clear that he's not just suffering from paranoia-ridden dreams, that he has some kind of illness or trauma that he's going through, and it's later detected to be, uh, in their words, a graboy-originated parasite that takes a long time to gestate. And he flashes back to the, what is it, third movie? Where he's eaten by a graboid and survives because he was inside of a oil drum when he was eaten. Okay. And that's, and that's where he supposedly got it. And it hasn't come up until just now because it's been such a low gestation, like slow and just... Ugh. Anyways. Um, you still have to cut your way out of a giant worm. Right? That's, that's, they used a ch yeah. chainsaw. I got him out with a chainsaw. And you know what? I would bet you his horoscope said nothing about it for that day. <laughs> Possibly expect the unexpected. You know, that, that would be about the extent of it. Did I mention this movie 69 minutes long? No, that's were, really uh there were, there were episodes of The Office that were longer than this movie. Right? <laughs> Six, 69 and it it drags a lot in the beginning. <laughs> that's 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 awesome to be able to make a 69 minute movie that drags. <laughs> <laughs> and then it gets to the graboid part and the graboid part is really sucky which is the worst because that's what you're here for yeah anyways uh bert accuses the canadian government of doing illegal testing and breeding of super graboids that they will use for the military because canada right uh-huh uh he says one of his famous lines which is not quite the same uh, the famous line usually entails, I was uh, I was not privy to need to know information, something similar to that. While in this one he says, I was never properly briefed on the lay of the land, which is also a change, uh, same as his Seahawks cap. Which, mm -hmm. in theory, makes it seem as if things are changing now, you know? Because he has this parasite that's going to kill him if he doesn't get an antidote from a live graboid. And things have cha are changing, and he has his son with him. So there's this part in the back of your head where you think, is Bert gonna die at the end of this? Is this, ja this Jamie-esque person going to become the new Bert? Okay. A new Bert, uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll I'll get back to that, but um. Hold on one second. We're looking for something. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but every movie has some kind of uh love interest for one of the side characters. The first one was Val. The second one was uh, his friend. What was his friend's name? Earl. Earl. The second yes. one was Earl. Um, Fred Ward. Yeah. I've always loved Fred Ward, and he's never really gotten a part that's put him over the top. He's always been like kind of a B-lister, sometimes dipping down into C. Right? He's kind of hot, too. Um, I don't know about <laughs> that, personally. Uh, back in his okay. day, I'd fuck Kevin Bacon. I'll tell you that <laughs> one. Fred right? Ward, no. You know, Fred Ward. You know, you know. see, the thing is, is what I need out of a man is for that man to be a lot like a woman. You know? So it would be like Kevin Bacon. It would be like Johnny Depp. It would be like Kevin uh, Russell Brand. You know? You girly oh, man. Yeah. You know? You girly men. See what I would be afraid of, for, afraid of with like Ben War, uh, Fred Ward, is that 
he'd make me he'd make me his bitch and 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 that just not does not fit into my personal view of myself <laughs> you know that's that's the best take on Fred Ward I've ever heard yeah i mean the the same thing keeps me away from antonio banderas i'm going to quote you on that bunny bunny fred ward would make me his bitch yeah yeah mhm I love it. Please, please do. <laughs> My hammer um, only swings for justice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Next, what happens is that there's this long till the end of the movie fight against three graboids. One ass blaster. There's only one. I don't know how that's possible since it's been confirmed that when graboids molt and become the next line when they pupate, um, there are three released. There are three screechers, shriekers, there are three shriekers, and then each one molts into an ass blaster. So by definition, there should be at least three, right? That is what I would think, yes. But there's only one, and there's three graboids that haven't pupated yet. So I'm just very confused on the whole situation. Uh, but they take out the ass blaster relatively quickly. Um, there's there's a really good scene where a scientist tries to run away and is cornered by the ass blaster. Uh, Bert wards it off for a second and then tries to encourage the scientist with these words. He tells him to repeat after him, I have balls of steel. My balls are stainless steel. My balls are in the Guinness Book of Balls. <laughs> and the scientist, and the scientist, clearly fearing for his life, uh, repeats this back and then gets shoved back into the house where they're safe. Uh, he later dies anyways because he tries to get away in a car, and then a graboid comes up and crashes into it and flips the car over. Which, by the way, was impossible in the first movie. So yeah, yeah, I I, I call bullshit. Anyways, uh, there's a lot that I'm just not into in this movie. This one, this one is probably my least favorite out of all of them. Yeah. I even like the fifth one a little bit better because it had some semblance of something that was familiar to the old. If you had movie. to give each movie a letter grade, what would that be? Oh, God, Bunny. Um... Well, the first one, uh, compared to the others, is clearly an A. Okay. Now, compared to other monster movies, it's more of a B, B plus, possibly. Um, you know? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's trying, and it does make for a good special effect monster movie on its own. Uh, but compared to the others, it's definitely an A. Then there's the second one, which, since Fred Ward is in it, clearly is an A minus. Oh, that's that's uh, pretty high for that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fred Ward may, plays a really good part in that one. Um, believe it or not, I actually like the fourth one more than I like the third one. So the fourth one gets a solid C. And uh, I don't know if you know that one. That one's the origin story of Bert's family going to Perfection Novato. And there's also Graboids. Okay. So he actually Uh, knew about them, but he didn't tell anybody? No, no. They never talked about it. They just killed him there. And then, well, it was, it was, um, it was cowboy times. Oh, okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, Michael Gross played his own character's grandfather great grandfather okay that was fun um and then the third movie has the addition of ass blasters as well as killing miguel from the first movie and that's bullshit and that gets a c minus maybe even a d 
Oh, okay. That's serious. But since you're Deanna, wouldn't a D be like an A? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, number five has some interesting plot points, but at the same time, I think that the monsters look really fucking stupid because of the CGI. So that one gets an F. Yeah. And then number six gets whatever is lower than an F. An F minus, an F minus minus, a G. Number six is the worst. Number six gets a zero. Ooh. What? It didn't even make the alphabet. Oh. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's disappointing. That's all it was. <laughs> um. Anyways, I was saying earlier that there was a... Uh, there's always a love interest. Well, in this one, there's another scientist. Her name is Rita, and she's the love interest for the son. Uh, Travis is his name. The Jamie lookalike. Yeah. Uh, and at some point, uh, Travis risks himself to lead the Graboid away from them. And uh, she says, and I quote, Biomechanics are so sexy. Oh, okay. In the most forced line I I'd ever heard. And uh, Bert tilts his sunglasses down and just looks at her. Because, you know what? Me too, buddy. <laughs> uh, sh- she later risks her own life because she is running to Travis where he is on a rock. And uh, she is caught by the pant leg by one of the, the little inner mouths. Yeah. And he says to take off her pants. And she refuses to because she is going commando in Alaska. Okay. It gets cold in Alaska. Bert, Bert shoots off that little inner mouth eventually. But she definitely risked her own demise just because... She didn't want Travis to see her gooch. Okay. Her Mnuchin. <laughs> uh, I have a scene here that's called that's just stated as P diversion. P diversion. In, in which Bert convinces one of the uh, researchers, uh, a, a black man whose name I don't remember and who doesn't do anything else but lives to the end. So he's really not that much of a part uh, to drop trousers and pee on the ground to lure away away the Graboid's attention. So that was a scene that happened. Uh, another, another one that's worth talking about is there's a character called Swackhammer, Swackhammer. Ma- yep. He's a Mag- MacGruber type? Yeah. Um, or MacGyver? MacGruber! Whatever. Uh, he makes things. I don't know. But he's crazy. And he mentions that there's a Graboid coming and he calls her Sally. And they say, you named this Graboid? And he says, in a very uncomfortable scene, um, he says, uh, her name is Sally. He's na- she's named after one of his exes, Sally Soul Smasher, um, a man-eating bitch that stuck her nose in where it didn't belong. Oh! And then everyone kind of looks at him, and it's never addressed again. Oh! Mm-hmm. So first off, what did he do to the original Sally? Well, that just kind of reminds me about uh, of like the the one of the opening scenes to Armageddon. You must have seen Armageddon, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Oh, the meteor is heading for Earth, and Bruce Willis has to become an astronaut and go save save it. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a scene in there where the guy who had spotted the asteroid was just like an amateur astrolog- astronomer. And uh-huh. 
God, he spoke like he spoke so horrible to his wife. Just like cringe, just like, oh, I hate these people. Because then the wife would start doing it back too. It's like, oh my God, I hate the both of you. Jesus. <laughs> well, God. Okay, uh, what happens next, according to my notes, is um, Bert mentions a gun that Travis is holding and he says, Where do you get it? And Travis says that he got it from Heather. Which is Reba's character in the first movie. Oh, Reba. And I have a lot of questions as to the timeline of where they even met up again. How did he find and or know about Heather in the first place? I'm very confused. Anyways, um, what I have here now is a list of quotes that I, towards the end that I thought was interesting. Uh, where they're killing two of the Graboids, and then they trap the third one in a very strange way that I will express in a second, but uh, Travis says the line, that'll close the carpool lane. That'll close the carpool lane. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, I don't know. For the carpool lane, you have to have two or more people. In the car, so, so if, I guess he killed one of the graboids and was like, "That's it, no more, gra no more carpool lane for the graboid." <laughs> that would be my guess, yeah. Somebody's grandma has breast cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, laughed so hard that it glitched. <laughs> <laughs> no, mommy told me not to let anyone touch these. Okay, um. There's a whole montage where they're prepping this way to catch the Graboid. And they're on the ground running around getting all this shit together. And it doesn't attract the Graboid until one of the ladies sets down a pair of Newt uh, some Newton balls and makes them start clacking together. And that is what attracts the Graboid. And I'm just very confused by that entire scene because they made a lot of noise on the ground. Yeah. In the end, uh, they somehow managed to get it to leap out of the ground and into a storage container, which they have then skewered it into and trapped its three uh, three claw like you know how it's got the three uh, mandible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the it's trapped that in a grate so it can't close its mouth. And then I have here the words Graboid Torture Dance. <laughs> okay. Where they all stand around in front of it, taking turns dancing around, trying to either uh, shoot off or slice off the three tongues so that they can get access into the mouth without fear. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, because that can be scary. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Obvious. Yeah. Uh, they are, of course, going into the mouth because there's a sack in the back of the thre Graboid's throat that they need an injection from so that they can cure Bert. Now, before this happened, Travis told Bert his plan, and Bert said to just kill the Graboid and let him die. And Travis says this interesting line. Uh, it's called, he says, he says, I guess blood ain't thicker than ammo, is it, Bert? Okay. And then it cuts to a scene, a montage of Travis gearing up and then acting like Bert, in which he actually takes the Cubs hat and puts it on, and the aviator glasses, and like, has everything together and is ordering people around. So you think, oh, the circle has come, it's come full circle, right? Uh, this will be the new Bert, yeah? Yeah. No. No? Uh, to kill the last tongue, Bert waddles out in a uh, medical dress 
and he shoots one of them, and he turns around to waddle back inside, and he falls down, and you can see his ass. Yeah, I could do without that, personally. Just real, me. Good sh- real, real good shot of Michael Ross's ass. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. No. Anyways, they all agree that Travis should be the one to crawl in to get the injection because he is the one who wants to save his father. So he does, he gets it. Um, and then he, Bert, they, they save Bert. They think there's a cop out where they think that he, they tried everything and he still died. And then he sat up and he said, like, give me back my damn hat, boy. And then Travis turned around and smiled. I don't know. Uh, so that's, that's bullshit. Um, they also saved the leader of the Canadian government guy that was there, and saved him only if he agreed to, uh, let Travis and Bert live a life free of tax and give them perfection back. Okay. Which, I don't know how the Canadian government can do that. I, I don't think they can. And then, um... Were they not after that one? And then... The government, the Canadian government looks at the trapped graboid and says, you know, you were right. Maybe we should try and use these as weapons. And then Travis is like, ha ha, you wish. And then he throws an explosive into its mouth and blows it up. <laughs> okay. And that is the end of the movie. But also there's one iconic line Bert says that I just want to mention because it's my favorite line in the whole movie, in the whole series, really. And it's. I'll be dead when I say I'm dead. <laughs> okay. I can see that on the back of a drop, right? And that is Tremors 6, A Cold Day in Hell. The, uh, not even arguably, the confirmed worst movie in the entire series. Oh, really? Yes. It, it, and- it, has, it has consensus past, past your assessment? I don't think I think I'm the only one in the world who's watched it. Actually, what? Uh, there, that might be a big possibility of that. I heard so. somebody bashing it the other day, so it could have been. You heard someone? Okay, well, yeah. if somebody was bashing it, then it's still Dana's right. Yeah. See, Destiny no, just said good. she heard someone talking shit about it, and uh, even if I'm not the only one to see it, they were talking shit. So consensus, consensus wise, yes, it's the worst. Okay. Yes, don't touch. Yeah. Are you gonna want to go home after this? Yeah. All right. So uh, that's the end of whatever I wanted to talk about. I need to go lay down. Okay. Because you feel better, all right? A lot of pressure. In my face. You were a trooper. Thank you. I've been wanting to talk about this for three weeks. <laughs> and maybe when I'm better, I'll take another special of D and D. Maybe even an hour long no, one where I go over. All of the details of all of the movies and some of my favorite scenes. Okay. Because, trust me, I have a lot to say about this series of movies. And uh, no one listens. (laughs) (laughs) That's what podcasting is for. Exactly. All right, Bunny. Well, you have a great day, and I'm going to hand it back off to Steve. All right. Same to you. You be good. Or you I be will. careful. Okay. We should probably feed Max. Oh yeah, he's gonna have to feed the chicken. Yeah. I know. Hi, buddy. Hey there. Uh, before we get back on the air. Okay. During during that episode of D and D, I heard some shocking oh, news. Yes. Shocking news. I'm not going to tell you now. But bunny. Funny? But but this yeah. is huge. It's going to blow your mind. So what okay. I'm going to do is, I'm not going to tell you now, because I want us to discuss it in the next episode, at length in the next episode of the Pope on Film. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tell you the news when we're done with Act 3. Okay. Okay, this is huge. This is going to be an amazing... It's incredible, Bunny. This, oh my God, this blows my mind. So uh, we will be discussing that huh, next week, but I'll tell you what it is 
once we finish, okay? Okay. Hey, remind me, but I don't think you'll have to remind me. This is fucking huge. So, okay, let's let's do this. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> 